Praise the Lord, everybody. I am ready to get started tonight. If you would, please click, tag, and share. I am, of course, excited about what the Lord is going to give us on tonight. So I want to jump right in. Do not want to waste any time. Uh, but first of all, we got to open with prayer. Father, we thank you on tonight for what you're going to say, what you're going to speak to us. We thank you, oh God, for being a good, good father. We thank you, oh God, for every listener. We thank you for every click, tag, every share. Oh God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you move on tonight in a supernatural way, oh God, touch every listener's ears, oh God, that they will hear what you are saying, oh God. I pray on tonight, dear God, that they don't look on me, but that they look to you, oh God. I thank you for every listener. Oh God, I ask that you send your anointing in their homes, oh God, to do that thing that you need to get done that needs to happen, oh God. I pray on tonight, dear God, that you will fulfill someone's heart's desire, God. I pray on tonight, dear God, that you will send divine healing, oh God. I pray on tonight, God, that you would do that which only you can do. Dear God, we pray on tonight, dear God, that you throw your weight around. We thank you, oh God, for being a good, good father, a good provider. We thank you, oh God, for loving us more than we love ourselves. Oh God, have your way on tonight, dear God. Touch and anoint my lips, oh God, that I will speak only that which you have spoken, oh God. I thank you on tonight for every listener. I thank you on tonight for every doer of your word, God. I pray that you have your way tonight, oh God. And we thank you in advance, oh God, in your name we do pray. Amen and amen. I am going to jump right in. I ask again that you would click, tag, and share. Um, and again, as I always say, it's not to make a platform for me, but it's to make a platform for God. Amen. It's to get his word out to his people on tonight. So tonight I want to jump right in because God had been speaking to me. Um, starting, I was on the road, um, was it Thursday, Friday, um, traveling and the Lord began to just speak to me. And I had been sharing with some intercessors, sharing with my church family that now is the time to possess the land. And God just continued to deal with me with that word. So I want to go right into what he was saying. He said, now is the time to go and possess the land. He said, tell my people to get ready. It is time to cross over. So you've been in the wilderness long enough. You've been in stagnated long enough. Now is the time to cross over. Now is the time to possess the land. God said, I promised to give you a land filled with milk and honey. It is time for you to cross over. It's time for you to go possess. This is your season, saith the Lord. And he asked the question on tonight. He asked the question, why haven't you proceeded? Why haven't you recovered all? What haven't you, why, why haven't you recovered all? Why haven't you proceeded? Why haven't you crossed over? He said, I promised you houses that you would not build. He said, I promised you a sweatless victory. He says on tonight, it is time to cross over. My God, my God, my God. He says, why? Because now you are part of the Joshua generation. He says on tonight, and I, I feel you all saying I've heard that before. Um, but, but tonight God is saying, you've heard it before, but I'm about to present it a different way. Because if you heard it before and you have not proceeded and you have not crossed over, then you didn't hear what I was saying. That is what God is saying on tonight. So let's look at this. Let's look at this. What is, what does it mean to possess? My God, here we go. To possess something means to acquire it, to maintain it, to occupy, to own, to seize, to dominate, to grab it, to hold it, to be blessed with, to be born with, to be endowed with, to get your hands on it, to get a hold of it, and to latch on to it and to take over, my God, my God. So you can take any one of those words and think about it. One of the, one of the synonyms is to be blessed with it, my God. And we already know that the blessings of the Lord make it the rich and add in no sorrow, my God, my God. But we are a part of this Joshua generation, the Joshua generation. So if we are part of the Joshua generation, that means that it is time for us to cross over. It is time for us to take possession. 
And God is saying, right now, we're, we're, you're already in the last quarter. You're, I'm already, he said, I'm waiting to pour out blessings, but I need my people to get in position. I need them to believe me enough to go possess. My God, my God. He said, some people are stagnated because they don't believe me. They, they, they hear the word when I say it's yours. Word when I say you can have it. He said, but you won't move. Oh, here we go. He said, but you won't move. He said, I'm promising you in this season a sweatless victory. My God, my God. I feel the anointing coming. He says, I'm promising you a sweatless victory. My God, my God. Okay, let me go. So in order to talk about this, in order to, for you to understand what I mean when I say you are a part of the Joshua generation, you have to understand who Joshua was. So according to the Hebrew Bible, Joshua was one of the 12 spies of Israel sent, of, he was one of the 12 spies of Israel sent by Moses to explore the land of Canaan. So in Numbers 13, one through 16, and after the death of Moses, he led the Israelite tribes into a conquest of taking over Canaan, my God. So Joshua and Caleb, are two Israelite men whose stories offer examples of faithful commitment unto God. So they were faithful. Oh, here we go. They were faithful, number one, but they came out of Egypt, here we go, with the Israelites through the Red Sea and into the wilderness. I got to stop right there. Number one, they were faithful to God. Number two, they came out of, you got to move. You got to move. You can't say I'm going to possess the land and you don't move. Watch this. They came out of Egypt, their wilderness. They came out of what they were stuck in and they crossed over the Red Sea. My God, I, that, that, that's a whole nother lesson. So they came out of Egypt, their wilderness place, their, their hard place. They crossed over the Red Sea, something that could have held them up, but they crossed over the Red Sea. Why could they do this? Because they believed God. Watch this, because remember, in Egypt, they were fed with manna. So they already knew what God could do. They already knew that God could provide. They already knew that God, God had shown himself to be powerful. God had shown himself to be mighty. So they already knew that God can. My God, he brought God, brought them out of the wilderness over the Red Sea. And, and now here we are, my God, here we are. So they, they, they crossed over, they, they um, went through the Red Sea and Joshua and Caleb were a select, selected along with 10 other men to explore the promised land and to give a report to Moses and the people. After 40 days, there go that number 40. After, 40, after a 40 day exploration of Canaan, the explorers reported, we went into a land which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. And here is the fruit. Now we already know about the fruit that, that, that they found over there. The grapes were so big, it took more than one man to carry them. My God, my God. So this is the land. Now, now understand this, everybody didn't come back with that report. Only Joshua and Caleb, because they saw with their spiritual eyes, not with their flesh. Remember we talked about that the other week. So when they looked, they saw in the spirit, this is a land that flows with milk and honey. This is the land that was promised to us. So watch what happens next. Then in Numbers 13, 1 through 16, after the death of Moses, um, they are led, the, the, he led the Israelite tribes to conquer Canaan, like I said before. And he was also Moses' assistant and became the leader of the Israelite tribes after the death of Moses. But I want to stop right there. Before I get into my scriptures, I want to stop right there because understand this long as the people were with Moses, they were in the wilderness. My, here we go. Here we go. But remember, while they were in the wilderness, they started mumbling and complaining. So a lot of them did not cross over. They couldn't cross over because you mumbled and you complained. My God. But here come Joshua and Caleb. Now that he sent out 12 spies. Only two came back with the report of the Lord, and that was Joshua and Caleb. What were the rest doing? My God, what is God saying tonight? When you go to possess the land, be careful who's in your ear. When you go to possess the land, make sure your vision is clear and that you see and hear and that you see and you hearing God clearly and not your flesh. Your flesh will keep you from possessing your property. 
Who, Jesus? Your flesh will keep you from present from possessing your promise, from going over into the promised land. Why? Because remember those that were over there, they mumbled and they complained and it cost them everything. In fact, I think the story goes on to say that you won't even go. It'll be some of your, maybe your children will get to go. Because you complained in your wilderness place. You can't curse your wilderness and think you're going to cross over to your promise. Woo! That, that's a whole, that, that's a whole nother, whole nother sex segment right there. You cannot cr curse your wilderness and think you're going to cross over to your promised land. My God. Why, 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 why can't I curse my wilderness? Because your wilderness experience is what births your anointing. Your wilderness experience is what gives you strength. Your, remember last week in the furnace of my affliction, God has perfected me, has refined me. Don't curse your wilderness experience. Why? Because God uses everything. If you haven't learned anything all these weeks that we've been on here, one thing you ought to know by now is that God will use the, the, the foolish things to confound the people of this world. God will use your trials and your tribulations to exalt you. God will use your wilderness experience to get you to your promised land. My God, my God, you cannot curse your wilderness. Why? Because my wilderness made me. My wilderness experience is why I pray like I do. My wilderness experience is why I preach like I do. My wilderness experience is why I can go through what I can go through and come out with the victory. Why? Because I believe God when I was in my wilderness. So now it's nothing for me to trust him to take me to my promised land. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Here we go. Here we go. So what is God saying here? So let's look at Joshua 1. Joshua 1, 1 through 8. After the death of Moses, the servant, the, uh, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, a Moses, my servant is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to you, the Israelites. I would give you every piece. Oh, here we go. I would give you every piece, every place where you set your foot as I promised to Moses. Moses didn't go. Moses didn't get to go. So now he's, God is telling Joshua, everywhere your feet go, I'm going to give you that land. My God. And why could they go? Why could they go over to this? Because they already knew that God could. God had already proven who he was. They already knew that God could do this thing. So they were not shaken because they trusted him when they were in the wilderness. My God, my God. So watch this. Every, every, I would give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon to the great Euphrates and all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the West. No one, here we go. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give to them. Be strong and be courageous. Be very careful to obey the law my servant gave, my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it, nor to the right, nor to the left, and you will be successful, my God, everywhere that you go. Keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you be careful to do everything that is written into in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you everywhere that you go. My God, what is God saying here? He's telling him, stay focused on me. Keep your eyes fixed on me. And everything that you do, I'm going to make you prosper in it. Everywhere your feet shall, I'm going to give you that land. All they had to do was obey God's word. He said, meditate on my word day and night. And, and keep it in your heart. And I'm going to make you be successful in everything you do. Why? Because you trusted me in your wilderness experience. So who is God talking to tonight? I don't care what you've been through, what you're facing, how you how you dealing with it. God says, if you can trust me in your wilderness, 
Watch me work, my God. He said, if you can trust me in your, in your wilderness place, if you can trust me when you're going through, if you can trust me when your heart is breaking, if you can trust me when your finances is jacked up, watch me walk you right into your promised land and everything you put your hands to do, you're going to prosper in it. I'm going to make you successful in it. I'm going to make it work in your favor. My God, what is God saying tonight? Who is God talking to? Watch this, watch this. Deuteronomy 11 and 24 says, every place where you shall set your feet, your territory will extend. And he's, he gave the same instructions to Moses, but Moses didn't go. Joshua went. Oh my God. And then he tells Joshua the same thing. He, he read and he tell him, what I promised Moses, I'm about to give it to you. What is God saying to you on tonight? Some things that your parents didn't get. Here we go. Here we go. I'm about to give it to you. My God, my God. Some, some things your parents may have left this earth with, with desires and God said, I'm going to do it. And for whatever reason, it didn't happen. Well, they don't show us. That's your inheritance. Every promise belongs to you. So what do you do when you're in this position? God, if my daddy didn't get it because he left this earth, if my grandmother didn't get it because she left this earth, if my grandfather didn't get it because he left this earth, God, everything that would you promise to them, it belongs to me. I want my stuff. I'm ready to possess my land. So what, what is my prayer? God, everything that you promised Curtis Pauling, it belongs to me. I'm his seed. Everything that you promised Minnie Broom, it belongs to me. Everything that you promised Sam Broom, it belongs to me. Why? Because I am their seed. I am their inheritance. Those are my ancestors. That is my father. So everything that they didn't get, God, here I am. I'm ready to possess my land. That is how you ask God. Why? Because God, I trusted you in my wilderness. I didn't, I didn't go to the left or to the right. Yes, it got hard. Yes, it, yes, it got, it got hard at times, but I trusted God. Even with God, I still trusted you. So now it is my time. Now I'm in the rightful place where I can go and possess the land. Everything that you promised me, I want it. And that is what God is saying tonight. Everything that he promised you, get in position to go possess it. He says, understand this. While I had you in the wilderness, he said, I've already told y'all, because many of y'all on here every week, God bless you. He said, but I've already told you that everything happens according to my plans and my purpose. It's all going to work in your favor. It looked like a wilderness to man. It shouldn't be a wilderness to you. Why? Because you understand the process. You understand the refining. In the furnace of affliction have I tried thee. He said, when you understand all that and how this all works together, then you can understand that I'm just in position. I'm just going through so God can get the glory out of this. And when God get the glory out of this and it's time for me to possess my land, I'm going to go get it. So what God is saying now, if those that have stood fast during the wilderness experience, I hear you, Holy Ghost, now is the time for you to go get your stuff. Now is the time for you to go possess the land. Why? He said, because you were in your wilderness and you didn't curse me. You were in your wilderness and you didn't give up on me. You were in your wilderness and you blessed me with, with tears in your eyes. You were going through your wilderness. Although you didn't understand, you didn't turn your back on me. He said, yeah, you thought about it. Yeah, you contemplated. He said, but at the end of the day, you said, for God I live and for God I die. And now he's saying, even though it may still look like you in the wilderness, he said, I'm about to bring you all the way out and take you over into Canaan. And when I take you over into Canaan, you're going to possess the land. And everything that you set your foot to do, put your hands to do, he said, I'm going to bless it. He said, I'm going to bless you because you didn't give on the, up on the promise. He said, I'm going to bless you because you didn't give up when you could have. He said, I'm going to bless you because you didn't go with the naysayers. He said, I'm going to bless you because you, didn't, you were like J um, Joshua and Caleb. You heard the voice of the Lord. He said, and so as I speak tonight, he says, you got to go out and possess the land. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I don't care what the economy looks like. He says, if you hear the voice of the Lord tonight, it's time to go possess the land. He says, that thing I've been telling you to go get, it is time to go get it. He said, the reason why you're not moving is because of fear. So tonight we bind the spirit of fear. Tonight we bind the, the spirit of laziness. Tonight we bind the spirit of second guessing and double mindedness. And we step over into the things of God. And we go back and we take everything that the enemy has stolen. In fact, we go back and we take the promises of our ancestors, the promises of our fathers, the promises of our mothers. And we say they belong to us tonight. 
and we go out and we possess the land. Why? Because it belongs to us. And now is the season. Now is the season. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So what, what is God saying? Set to, to, he said, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. He said, set your foot. Listen to this. Set your foot is literally the sole of your foot. Set upon. What is God saying? God gave this promise to Moses. And now he gives it to Joshua. He said, some of the promises that, that he gave to your, for, your forefathers and your, your grandparents, he said, now they belong to you. Just like the promises that he gave to Moses, he said, now I'm giving them to Joshua. And who do you think Joshua gave his promises to? To his kids. And it keep going. He said, but the problem is that we don't want to get up and go and possess. And he said, the problem is we don't do that because of fear. My God, my God. So watch this, watch this. I'm gonna show you how Joshua dealt with this. So Joshua said to the Israelites, now we get on down there. Remember, he already said it's time for us to go possess the land. He already said it's time for us to go possess the land. Joshua came back with the report. Now he's the leader. And he said, it is time for us to go and possess the land. Now, here we go. Joshua 18 and three. So Joshua said to the Israelites, how long will you wait before you begin to take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors has given you. Now Joshua is mad. He said, why y'all still sitting here? What is the problem? Watch this. But there were seven Israelite tribes who had not yet received their inheritance. So Joshua said to them, how long will you wait before you begin to take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors has given you? Now Joshua instructs them. Watch this. Joshua is about to instruct them. He said, Go and survey the land. Since you won't move, go out there and see what's out there. I'm going to let you. See. Oh, here we go. I'm going to let you see it. Watch this. He says, go and make a survey of the land and write a description. Oh, boy. Write a description of it. Then come back to me. And then I will, I will cast lots for you in the presence of the Lord, my God. So the men left and went through the land. They wrote his description on scrolls. Then Joshua came back and he told, eventually Joshua tells them, he splits the land and said, now go. What, what is God saying? This is powerful right here. Joshua rebukes them because nobody has moved. What is God saying tonight? Who is he talking to? I told you over and over and over again to go and you're not moving because of fear. I feel it because of fear. Watch this. So then Joshua says, so since you won't move, I'm going to make you move. Uh-oh, here we go. I'm going to make you move. And so Joshua says, so now you go out there since you want, God tell me he promised you the land, but you won't possess it. So I'm going to send you to the land that he promised you. And I want you to write down everything you see and bring it back to me. Write the vision and make it plain. My God, my God. What is God saying tonight? Since some of you have not moved yet off of what I promised you, just go right out there and look at it. And then write down everything you see and then bring it back to God. Because watch this, they brought the report back to Joshua. Joshua went before God. What I'm saying to you tonight, you have allowed fear to keep you from possessing. He says, so now since fear has kept you from possessing so long, I want you to go look at it. I'm going to put it in your face. And then once you get there and you see it, write down everything that you see. In fact, some of you, oh, here we go. In fact, some of you on here tonight, God is saying, I'm going to show you in a vision. I'm going to show you in a dream. And when you wake up about three o'clock in the morning, write down everything that I have shown you and then talk to me about it. Oh, here we go. Here we go. And then let's talk about it. That's what God's saying. Since you have not moved yet, since you have not moved yet because of fear, I'm going to take you in baby steps over something you could have already had. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. On something that you could already be possessing. He said, I'm still going to give it to you. But since you want to move slow, I'm going to take you in baby steps. Go look at it. If you don't go look, I'm going to start showing you in visions. So you can't, that's all you're going to see. You're going to see what I told you to possess. And then you bring it back to me. And let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. That is what God is saying tonight. Watch this. Because if you look at this, if you look at this commentary on when on the commentary on Joshua 18 to 2 through 10, it says, 
after a year or more, Joshua blamed them for slackness. Oh my God. And he told them how to proceed. God, by his grace, has given us a title to good length. This is what Joshua was telling him. He has already told us what we're gonna get, what we're gonna have. We in Canaan. What is wrong with y'all? He says, but you are so why are you still slack on the promises of God? God already showed us. I can Joshua said, I saw it for myself. And, and we already got the land. He says, now you got to go get it. He said, go get it. He said, go get it. So he says, how long shall it be for you? How long are you going to wait? How long will you stand in your own light uh -oh, and forsake the mercy and, and of God? Joshua stirs the Israelites to take possession of their land. He is ready to do his part, but they won't do theirs. Oh, my God. My God. Here we go. What is God saying? I've done my job. I'm waiting on you. Ain't nothing else for me to do. He said, I done done my part. He said, but you won't even step out on faith. You don't believe me. You don't even believe that I can. He said, out of all I brought you through, out of all the things I've done, you, you think that thing is too big? He said, why did I show it to you? He said, why, why did I, he said, why did I get, why did I put it in your spirit if I couldn't give it to you? He says, I am God. He said, I own everything. Everything belongs to me. Everything belongs to me. He's saying tonight, so the thing that you've been, that he's already shown you, it was a desire of your heart. So he want to give it to you. And you're doubting him because now you think, oh, well, maybe that's too big. No, God's saying now is your season. Now is the time for you to go and possess the land. Watch this because you have to look at it. It's a difference between Moses versus Joshua. Joshua had an enormous respect and affection for Moses. And he didn't think that Moses was lucky, but he would, but he had always been watching Moses. Joshua was very attentive. He watched everything that Moses did. Watch this. Moses was, was a great man of God, um, but Joshua was an observer and he had a, a very tight relationship with God. It isn't until Moses dies that God actually speaks to Joshua. Uh oh. Here we go. Who all through the Bible, but before but when Moses was in charge, God spoke to Moses. He wasn't speaking to Joshua. He didn't. God didn't start speaking to Joshua until Moses died. Who? Who am I talking to tonight? But Joshua had this great respect, and he kept his eyes on how Moses did things. Watch this. But what is God saying tonight? What is it in the way that's keeping you from hearing me? So God doesn't speak to Joshua until Moses dies. Whoo, here we go. Here we go. So let me see. So it isn't until Moses dies that God speaks directly to Joshua and picks him as the new prophet and leader. Then Joshua becomes an actor in the same sense Moses was. One can only imagine the impact of that on Joshua because he spent his whole life watching Moses and what and he watched how J Moses and God had this special relationship watch this so then he gets chosen and all of a sudden he can hear God himself Moses on the other hand was doing all this for the first time here here's the here's the difference Moses was doing all this for the first time and learning the school he was learning the school of hard knocks he had nobody to watch he didn't have nobody to watch all Moses had was God to direct him and Aaron to speak for him. Watch this. There was no model for him to observe for 40 years before he became the prophet of the Lord. So what is this saying? Joshua watched Moses for almost 40 years. My God, studying him and watching how God talked to Moses. So surely, why would he talk to me? And all of a sudden, God starts speaking directly to Joshua. Oh my God. So you could see how Moses would have lived a considerably more so Moses went through more toil, more confusion and doubt than Joshua did, right? So part of this was because of that's who how it made Moses who he was. Before God spoke to him, he was described of a man that stuck, okay, and had anxiety, social anxiety. Watch this. That's why he needed Aaron. Watch this. Then the shock of God speaking to him and the charge to lead the people to the chosen land came all of a sudden. Even with personal knowledge of God and, through, and thorough understanding of the covenant, Moses must have lived an enormous life 
of worry and anxiety and anguish because he didn't have anyone to teach him. All he had was the voice of God. Now, Joshua, on the other hand, is, was a man on a mission. He was a man on a mission. That's why God said, you guys, we are the Joshua generation. We can hear the voice of the Lord. We know the voice of the Lord. And we are people that are on a mission. We're on a move. We're trying to get to Canaan. We're in the last quarter. We don't care nothing about COVID. We, we, we sorry and we, we, we sympathize with those people that died. But some people get blessed during this season. Some people get got more of unemployment. They got working on a nine to five. Come on now. Some you trust me. People on people, there are people that are eating better now than they ever ate. Trust me, it's not a lot of people that, that we know that has lost their jobs or went hungry and didn't have and suffered. They went through, they were in their wilderness. Oh, here we go. They were in their wilderness and they kept they're coming out on the other side. So now we're on a mission. Oh my God, here we go, here we go. So now we're on a mission because God has used this thing as a setup for the saints. You can say COVID did this and COVID did that and I'm just, woe is me, but I, that's not my testimony. I'm sorry. That's not my testimony. God has blessed me all throughout COVID and, and, and God has blessed my daughters and my family. None of my seed has been begging for bread. Amen. So God has been good. But watch this. We are the Joshua generation. So at this point, we ought to be on a mission for God. My God, watch this. So we have Joshua here. He knows exactly who he is, his relationship with God and the implications of, of that relationship. And you can see and we see the seeds of that leadership in his youthful experience and maturing of Joshua, who has the benefit of watching Moses. My God. So you have two different people. You had Moses who led the people in and they were in. They got he got them out of Egypt, but they sat in the wilderness and they complained and messed everything up. You got Moses who didn't get the cross over because he did not obey what God told him. Understand that. Moses did some things that God did not like, and therefore he did not get to go see Canaan. The people that were with him did not get to go see because they complained. Now, so you have Moses who was stuttering, who had anxiety, who was worried, who was all these things. But then here comes Joshua. I've been watching you, Moses. I saw you speaking to God. I saw what God did with that Red Sea. I saw all these things. I saw God feed us with manna from heaven. So I've seen all this. I, I witnessed this for myself. So here comes Joshua, who I know God for myself. He's strong in his faith. He's strong in who he is. He don't need nobody to speak for him. Joshua say, I got this. I know who God is. And what is God saying on tonight? You got, you know me. You know my voice. You saw me bring you out over and over again. So you are a part of the Joshua generation. You cannot be stagnated and stuck in, in the wilderness as those people did that complain. That is why it's important. Don't complain about your wilderness experience. You're gonna get stuck. They were stuck for 40 years and they never got to their promise out because of complaining. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. Watch this. So watch this because not everyone will possess the land. Caleb had a different attitude from the, from the other spies. Verse 30 records. Then Caleb silenced the people. Caleb did this. He silenced the people before Moses could even speak. Remember, I told you Moses was timid. Moses get, was, was, was um, reserved. Caleb told the people, basically, shut up, let me talk. That's what Caleb did. He didn't even give Moses a chance to speak. The Bible says, then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. Everybody else, we can't do it. The land too big. It's giants over there. Did you see them grapes? We do this complaining. Be careful who you hang around when you're about to possess your promised land. Be Watch them people. Don't do that. I wouldn't do that now. Don't you know it's COVID? You don't know what's going to happen next. You better not do that. You might need that money. You better not spend nothing. Don't do this. Watch them people when they're when they speaking against what God told you. Oh, my God, I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody in your ear is going to cancel out your promise if you keep listening to them. Be careful who you allow to speak in, to speak into your spirit. You got to move in silence. My God, you have to move in silence. You can't let everybody know your next move. You can't let everybody know what you're doing next. Move in silence and watch who's speaking around you. Pay attention to what people say. Pay attention. We call them haters. No, I call them people that will steal your promise. 
promise still, that's what they are. They steal your promise. They steal your destiny off of what they speak. And then it get down in your spirit and you start believing that mess. And no, I guess, you know what? You right. Now may not be a good time. Well, God already told you to go. God already told you to go. But you listen to all these people. Now, tr- now watch this. Have you ever noticed? I'm, I'm off my nose, but I feel y'all now. Have you ever noticed? People, when you say, you know what? I was thinking about starting me a um, nonprofit. Girl, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't even do that right now because you know how COVID is. You don't know if people going to support you. Ain't nobody going to give because they don't have no money. People going through. Watch that. And I guarantee you the person that's telling you don't do it, don't have nothing. And they don't want you to have nothing. You have to watch people like that. You have to watch people like that. They don't have nothing. They don't want you to have nothing. They see it on your life. And all they do is because some people just around you. Some people just around you just to see, just to see what you're going to do. Let me watch. Let me see her next move. Let me see what she's going to do next. Let me see what she's going to do next. Why? So they can go steal it. Satan plant people around you for that purpose, to get you off track, to stop you from moving forward, to stop you from possessing the land. The things some of us on here tonight, we could have been had years. and years to to the wrong people. When God speaks something in your ear, you better heed the voice of the Lord. I don't know who I'm talking to because some of y'all are going to miss out because sometimes when you don't move and God say move, you will lose it. And he'll take that same thing and give it to somebody else and then make you sit up and watch it. He'll make sure you see it. And you'll be sitting there like, "Mm, God told me to do that. No, but you didn't move. You you doubted him because you listened to people saying, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go do that. No, don't do it right now. Why don't, you, why don't you wait to this time next year and then go do it? And then this time next year, somebody else, now the program is gone and now you can't get it. And you sitting there saying, I should have went. I should have went ahead and did that then. That is what happens to us a lot of times. Now watch this. So I'm, I'm all off my notes now. When the, so Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. When the people complained that they could not go up to conquer the land, both Caleb and Joshua, watch this, responded strongly. They got mad. They got mad. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb both tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into the land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and he will surely give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord. Here we go. He said, don't rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will devour them. Oh, my God. He said, we will devour them. Their protection is gone. But the Lord, our God, is with us. Do not be afraid of them. What is God saying tonight? Here we go. Here we go. My God, my God. God is saying to you tonight, whatever he told you to go get, he said, go get it. Don't be afraid of the bankers. Don't be afraid of the lenders. Don't be afraid of who you may have to talk to. He said, because I am going before you. He said, I promised it to you, so I'm going to give it to you. I just need you to step out on faith and believe me. Y'all, everybody, know, well, don't, everybody don't know, but my testimony um, happened. I was on the road traveling and my car started giving me trouble. And so I was saying, why in the world would this car give me trouble now? And I haven't paid it off. God allowed me to pay it off early. So I had paid off my car. No car, no. I'm right. And, and, but everybody that know me know. I always talk about a Mercedes Benz. Always. I don't have a Mercedes Benz. I'm going to get me a Mercedes Benz. So my car gave me trouble. And my friend told me, he said, drive it. See if you can make it back home. So I got back home. And when I got the car, drove home fine, but it gave me trouble the whole time I was out of town. So I took it to another person. They said, no, your transmission is gone. Like, you better get rid of this car. I said, the car driving good. Y'all know, people that know me know I don't like bills. I, I, don't, I don't like having to owe people money. I have a problem with that. So I don't have credit cards. All I got is a mortgage. And, and so, and that's just because that's the way that God, that's the way that God is using, does me. So I came home and I sat down. And I went upstairs and I said, well, Lord, I guess I'm going to have to get rid of this car. And I said, but I went in the room and I sat on my bed and I said, God, if it be your will. I said, it's not that you can't. 
I said, but if it be your will, you'll give it to me. I said, God, if it's your will, everything will fall into place. This will be a sweatless victory. I said, God, if it be your will, you already have picked up the car. You have already went to the car lot. You have already done this thing for me. And God began to tell me, he said, I'm Mercedes Benz. And I said, who? Who, who, who? Because I know that God can do it. So what I did is I talked to my friend, I talked to my cousin, and I said, well, I don't know I'm talking to y'all, but y'all ain't got no money. So I said, let me call the bank. And I called the bank that holds my mortgage. I said, I need to get, I want to purchase a car. I need to know before I go to the car lot, how much can I get approved for and what will be my interest rate? They said, well, hold on. They said, give us 10 minutes. I said, 10 minutes. Came back. We're going to give you an interest rate of 4.5. I said, really? They said, yeah. Gave me more than enough money to get the car. I said, okay. Okay, now we're working. I said, okay, I see you, God. So then what I did is I got up the next morning. And I looked at Whitney. I said, let's ride out. So I go to the car lot. Walk in the building. Let me show you how God worked this thing out. Walked in the building. Went to Hendrick. I said, no, I'm not going to no, no shade tree. We're going to, the, to where, they, where I can get a certified. So we go on the car lot. I walk in. I say, hi. I tell them who I am. And, and I, I tell them, I'm already, I'm already pre-approved. I don't need y'all um, financing. So they looked at me. And they said, what was your interest? I said, it's 4.5. He said 4.5. I said 4.5. He said, we can beat that. I said, really? He said, yeah. So I said, one second. I said, God, if you won't work this out, because I don't let nobody pull my credit. I said, God, if you give me the okay, I'll let them pull it. I said, but you got to speak now. I said, because I don't, I'm not letting them pull my credit because I already have the financing that I need. So God gave me the okay. I said, go ahead and pull my credit. They came back in five minutes. They said, what do you want on this lot? My God, y'all don't hear me. They said, with your credit, and watch, watch how God works. With your credit, pick out what you want. So y'all know me. Am I going to get the same payments? He said, oh, no, ma'am, you're not. He said, you ain't getting them same payments. He said, it depends on what you pick out on this lot. He said, but your credit is of the status. He said, you can get anything on this lot. Now, I'm at Hendrick. Y'all know Hendrick on Independence. The Mercedes Benz dealership. I said, well, ask. I said, well, give me, tell me this. I said, what interest rate are y'all giving me? He said, oh, 2.9. I said, huh? He said, yes, ma'am. He said, 2.9. He said, pick out any car that you want and, and we uh, will approve it. It's, it's already approved. I said, now what you gonna give me for my car? <laughs> Cause the transmission gone. I know that. And I'm, I'm sitting there like, God, don't let them people take that thing back there and put it up on that ramp because they're going to know that this car ain't worth nothing. So I said, he said, well, I'll give you. He said, what do you want for the car? So I told him. He said, OK. I said, well, wait a minute, since we're talking. I said, what about essential workers? He said, OK. He said, what do you do? I said, I'm a teacher. He said, OK, we'll take some thousands off of that. I said, oh, Jesus. I said, wait a minute. I said, so what, what do you do? I said, what do you do for as... Um, my payments. He said, well, ma'am, he said, can you go pick out a car first? So I went to pick out one Benz and I said, oh, that's, about, that's nice right there. I like that color. That's what I want. And there was two sitting bus right beside each other. Same color. One was an E class, one was a C. But everybody was telling me, go with the E, go with the E. But I didn't like the E. Me, it was a little bit bigger. I didn't want anything that big. So he says, drive both of them. And then come back and I'm going to tell you about them. He said, I want you to see the difference. So I drove um, two C class and I came back and he said, now, which one do you like? I said, well, which one the cheapest? He said, that's not what I asked you. My God. He said, which one do you like? Watch this. Remember everything. When, when God said that everywhere that the sole of your feet, you shall possess it. He going to give it to you. You shall prosper. He going to give you success. Watch this. He says, which one do you like? And I'm looking at them, and I know one is fully loaded, one is not. I said, well, I like the one that's fully loaded. He said, good choice. He said, because that is the one. He said, don't worry about the price on it. He said, that is the one that was, it was a previous um, company car. So it doesn't have miles on it. It had like 40,000 40, miles. He said, that's the one I would have chosen if it was me. He said, but understand this. He said, it has all the bells and whistles. It's fully loaded. He said, but... We're going to go back in and talk some more. So I'm like, hey, whatever. I'm just like, God, you do it. So I go in there, sit at the table, 
do the paperwork for the for the for the one that's loaded and i get ready to get up and leave and i say um so when is my payments due i said when are my payments due he said oh i didn't tell you i said nothing here we go he said um no money down he said no money down he said and we're going to cover all your payments for you until february i just sat there I said, oh, Jesus, I said, I am God's girl. I'm telling the salesman, I said, do you understand who I am? I am God's girl. He said, yeah, because they were like doing all kinds of things they don't normally do. He said, they took like thousands off the car. They gave you top dollar for your car. He said, in fact, with your car, listen to this, y'all. He said, with your car, we didn't even take it to the back to put it on the ramp. He said, we just needed the VIN number off of it. Who oh, Jesus. He said, we just needed the VIN number off of your car. Now, what I, I ain't even through with the testimony. He said, we just need the VIN number off of your ultimate. We're going we gonna to give you whatever you want. We're going to give you what you want for that. He said, we need the VIN number. He said, we're going to make your, he said, it's not like we're deferring. He said, understand. He said, because you're financed through Mercedes Benz. Oh my God. I said, here we go. He said, Mercedes Benz is financing this for you. He said, so as a courtesy, of you doing business with them, they're going to make your payments for you, not defer your payments. What did I tell y'all? The favor of the Lord maketh the rich and he added no sorrow. I'm not even done with the testimony. So I'm looking at the amount of the payment and I'm like, this can't be right. Not for no beans. This can't be right. I paid more than this for my Ultima. I'm telling y'all, when God say go, and possess the land, you have to go and you have to possess the land. Why? Because he's already gone before you. I had no idea I was going to need a new car. I had no idea I was going to um, go out to the Mercedes Benz. People that know me know I've just always said that one day I'm going to get me a Benz. I wasn't trying to get one now. I wasn't thinking about no Benz. I wasn't thinking about no car. Now understand this. I could have always driven one. But I'm one of the people that know me. I only move when God say move. Just like the house I live in. I could have gotten, I was financed, well, I would have had enough finances to get a, a house twice this size, but I have to listen to what God is saying. My God, my God. So watch this, watch this. So God judged the people. So, so now we already know that their protection is gone and Joshua is telling them, Joshua is telling them to go and possess the land. Joshua is telling them that it's time for us to go. They, they are not protected we God is going to give us this so this promise came true after the death of Moses 40 years later Joshua led the people across the Jordan River and into the promised land Caleb received an inheritance in the promised land as well watch this the faithfulness of Joshua and Caleb teaches us today to stand for God even when others won't my God even when everybody else is walking away. He says, if you listen to my voice, if you are faithful to what I say, he said, I would give you abundantly anything you can ask or think. He said, listen to my voice. When I say go, go, it's all about his timing. It's all about when he say move. You can't move when man is saying move. My God, you can't move when man is saying move. Watch this because I, I tell you something even so prophetic. We were in church. And my apostle said, three people are going to get cars. I was jumping and shouting for the three people, not knowing I was one of them. I was jumping, oh, they're going to get a car. They're going to get a car. Praise them. And I watched number one get one. Number two got one. And I'm like, who's going to be the third person? Because I, I was not looking for a car, nor did I want a car. Not at all. Oh, as soon as this happened, God said, number three. <laughs> he said, you're number three. And I said, but God, what? And God started reminding me of my wilderness experience. He said, somebody else promised you that car. He said, but I'm going to give it to you. He said, you've always wanted that car. He said, but I'm going to give it to you. He said, it's going to be a sweatless victory. I didn't do nothing but go to the car lot. I ain't give him no money. I ain't do nothing. I went to the car lot and listened to God. And these people literally have given me a car. I pay less, you got to understand what I'm saying, for a Mercedes Benz than I did for an Altima. I pay less. My interest rate is, is less than what I, now I went out and called the bank. 
because that's just how I, I, I ain't going to be moving and not know what I'm working with. So I already had my approval. God said, I do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. Don't play with me. He said, don't play with me. I got you in this. And he gave me a rate of 2.9. I had 4.5 and I was shouting over that. He said, no. And, and, and he said, no. He said, because I'm going to do exceeding and abundantly because of your faithfulness during your wilderness experience. My God, I don't know who that's for. Watch this. So their faithfulness can teach us how that we ought to stand for God either, even when everybody around us is not. When we do, God will choose to bless us in ways that will extend to generations to come. Why? Because I am setting up a standard for my daughters. Understand this. I'm showing them how to move with the voice of God. I'm showing them how to move in the timing of God. I'm showing them how to be faithful even when you're going through. How to be faithful even if you're crying. How to be faithful even if you're sick in your body. How to be faithful to the voice of God and do what he tells you to do. And watch what God will do. It will always be exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask. Why? Because that's how God works. And, and if you think about it, if you think about people that sow, if you think about people, because everybody, y'all, everybody know that I am a seed sower. I don't sow little seeds because I don't want a little blessing. That's just my thinking. I sow where I want to go. My seed always matches my need. That's me. But watch this. God says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor my seed begging bread. So why do you think when you are in a wilderness experience, we start to worry and God looking like, I got you there for a purpose. I'm birthing something in you. I'm trying to get you to your destiny. I'm trying to get you to your breakthrough. I'm trying to get you to what you desire from me, but I need you to trust me in your wilderness so I can lay this thing at your feet. There will be a sweatless victory standing around looking like, huh? And so one of my daughters told me, she said, Ma, she said, do you understand that you went, she said, it wasn't even two years ago, we were in an apartment. Listen to this, now this is my daughter talking. Two years ago, we were in an apartment. And in two years, God has given you a home, didn't bill, a car you didn't ask for. She said, it's like he's giving you the desires of your heart. And I begin, my eyes got full of water. And I told her, I said, it's because, I said, yes, I got worried. I said, yes. I questioned some things. I said, but I didn't give up on God. I said, I praised him with tears in my eyes. I praised him sick. I praised him burying my daddy. I said, all those things that I went through, I always knew that God had better. And I told him, but this ain't the end. I said, this is just the beginning. I said, y'all watch how God work in my life. And y'all watch how God do with me. And you watch the, all these things. I said, and it is your inheritance. I said, because everything that God doing in me, he can do in you. And if you're listening tonight, whatever you believe in God for, he says, believe me for the big thing. Some of you guys are believing God for things that is so little. So little. He said, I want to give you the desires of my heart, of your heart. But when I say go, you have to move. He said, I can't keep telling you to go. He said, I can't keep telling you to move. And you don't move. He said, after a while, I'm going to stop telling you to move. And I'm going to watch this. Oh, my God, I hear you, Holy Ghost. He said, after a while, I'm going to stop telling you to move and I'm going to give them promises to your children. He says, because if you don't bless it, they will. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I felt that one. He said, if you don't possess the land, I will give it to your children and they will. And I will make you watch. My God, my God, I don't know who he talking to. He said, I give it to somebody else if it's not your seed and I'll make you watch. And you would know that. They, he said, I'm going to make sure that you know it was supposed to be yours. He said, I'm going to make sure you know it. He, oh, my God. Let, let me move. Let me move. So what is God saying? And I have to close. He says, he says, it is time to stop being stuck. He says, it is time to go after what I promised you. He said, for some of you tonight, he said, you're going to start dreaming and I'm going to show it to you. Just as, He said, it's going to be like a movie screen right before your eyes and you're going to see it. He said, when you see it, write it down. He said, then bring it to me in prayer and remind me. Oh, here we go. 
He says, and then remind me of what I said. Remember the scripture, command ye me. Oh, here we go. He said, and then watch me work. He said, I'm going to show it to you in a vision. I'm going to show it to you in a dream. He says, and then after I show it to you, write every detail that he said, he said, when I show you, get up. I don't know who it is for. He said, because I show you things. I give you dreams. I give you visions and you still lay in the bed. I'm tired. I remember it in the morning. And when you wake up in the morning, you don't remember nothing. I don't know who that's for. He said, from now on, when I show you, get up and write it down right then and there. He said, and then remind me of what I said. He said, when you remind me of what I said, that puts a demand on it. He said, and watch me move. Watch me work. He says, watch me work. He said, there are things that are held up. He said, it's already released in the heavenlies. We need to get it to earth. He said, it's held up in the heavenly realm, but you're stagnated, so I can't release it to you. He said, you have to get in position and get ready to receive everything that I have promised you. My God, my God. So on tonight, I pray. I pray that you step into your Joshua anointing, that you step into your Joshua anointing and you go and you possess that land. And that you write down that vision and you go and you possess the land, everything that God has given you. Why? Because he already said it's going to be sweatless. It's going to be sweatless. And I don't know who he's talking to tonight, but he said, and when I show it to you, don't doubt me. He said, you've asked me for this great blessing, for this big blessing. You asked me to help you to possess the land. And then when I show it to you, you want to say, I wonder, is that God? He said, don't do that. He said, don't do that. He said, and I'm going to close with this. He says, because I warn tonight, if you don't possess it, if you don't possess the land, I will give your children and make you watch. I give it to your children and make you watch. My God, my God. Those people that were with Moses, remember, they didn't get to get the inheritance. Their children did. Why? Because they complained in their wilderness experience. Don't complain in your wilderness experience. Your wilderness experience is what's building you. It's what's making you. He said, trust me. Oh, shut up. He said, trust me when you can't trace me. He said, you got to believe that I got you. That you got to believe those scriptures that says, I'll never leave nor forsake you. He said, you have to believe that you're my girl. You have to believe that you're my guy. He said, why? Because in your wilderness, I am refining you. He says, that's when I'm making you who you are. He said, that's when I'm making you the woman and the man of God. He said, not when you're out on the, on the high top of the mountain. He said, it's in the wilderness that I'm building you up. My God, my God, my God. I am done on tonight. I am done. I pray that this word blessed you. If you choose to sow, you may do so. Um, any Everybody pretty much knows my cash app, but I will drop it. If you choose to sow, understand you sowing on good ground. Um, you, you've heard the testimonies of the people that got houses, cars, kidneys, all kind of stuff. Um, how God has stabilized people's minds. So you sowing into good ground. And understand this, when you sow, you sow into the word. That's like putting a seed in the ground and then putting a on it saying, God, I trust you to, to do what you said on this word. God, I trust you to move on this word that she spoke. I trust her to be your prophet. I trust her to be your mouthpiece. So I'm going to sow on this word. And now that my seed is in the ground, I'm putting a demand on it. I already, I'm waiting on Kiara. I know she's still on here to go get her house. I'm waiting on her. Me and God waiting. We got a house. When she get, when she get that house, I'm doing a house woman. Because that's my mentee. If y'all ever meet her, that's like a smaller version of me. That's a younger version of me. You know, that that's just me all day. But we're going to get that house. I've already told her. God showed it to me. I was sitting in church. God showed me her getting the house just as clear as day. Clear as day. So when, when you, you have to understand that you are so into good ground. And, and I don't say that because I, I'm trying to get rich. That That's not me. I don't do that. Um, I don't, you don't pay for prophecies. I you call me, I can give you one any day. That's what I do. I eat, sleep, prophesy. That's me. Um, I love the word of God. I, I keep my ear pinned to whatever he's saying for his people. And, and I, many of you have already sown many times before. I thank you for every seed sown. Um, I don't take it lightly. I don't take it for granted. I pray over those seeds. I don't just get like, oh, let me go. do. No, I pray over the seed. I believe it's an order to that. I pray over the seed. I just don't take it and be like, oh, well, I, yeah, no, I pray that God return it to them a hundredfold, and he does. 
I pray that God give them desire of his heart, of their heart, and he does. I pray that God give them peace, and he does. And 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 many people already comment because they know they know my they know my spirit, they know my ministry. Um, I just want the people of God to be blessed. I want people of God to be free. That's why I have a deliverance ministry. It's all about being free and walking in the power of God. Amen. So on tonight, if you choose to sow again, the cash app is there. If you don't, God bless you anyway. Um, I'm not all about the seed. I'm, I'm about the people of God getting into what God would have them to be um, and going where God would have them to go. So I love you with the love of God. Um, I will see you again if it's God's will next Monday or before. I don't know when it, whatever God says, but I love you and thank you so much for tuning in and be blessed with the love of God in Jesus name. Amen.